Hello, I'm Jim Kovpak, founder of the blog Russia Without BS and writer for Crack.com and Russia Magazine. And I am pleased to be this week's guest anchor for Stop Fake News. Russian and pro-Russian media falsely reported on September 24th that Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko had been intoxicated the previous day and was not allowed on a flight from Kiev to Moscow. The report cited a German radio journalist, Kristina Nagel. She allegedly broke the story with information she had received from the security service of Ukraine. When Stopfei contacted Nagel's radio station, however, station representatives quickly responded that they couldn't confirm. Later, a representative of the media company that owns the station issued a statement saying that it doesn't confirm such a statement. Neither Nagel nor any of our correspondents said anything like this. In reality, during the evening in question, September 23rd, Poroshenko attended an official meeting with U.S. Senator John McCain. Last week, Stop Fake News reported on a blog called Optimist that recently created a fake story about U.S. President Barack Obama accusing Ukrainian authorities of the genocide of their own people. The fake news was falsely attributed to CNN. Optimist was added again this week. This time it wrongly claimed that Obama had asked Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko to invite him to spend a vacation in Crimea, which had been annexed by the Russian Federation. Allegedly, he did this while they were both at the United Nations headquarters in New York in September for a meeting of the UN General Assembly. And again, it gave CNN as its source. The false story was picked up and reposted by other media, but a search on CNN's website produces no corroborating story of the information. Russian and separatist media have recently popularized an article from Nezavismaya Gazeta that argues that Hungary and other countries can reclaim present-day Ukrainian territories that once belonged to them by petitioning the International Court of Justice. The article uses a former border dispute between Romania and Ukraine over Snake Island in the Black Sea as an example of how this might be done, but the reference is both misleading and obscure. For several years, there was a dispute between Romania and Ukraine about the classification of Snake Island. Is it a rock or an island? And the continental shelf around it. In 2009, the International Court of Justice issued its judgment, delineating the territorial limits of the two countries in the Black Sea. Besides citing peripheral maritime law, the newspaper piece's author analyzes the possibility of Hungarian territorial claims, not for Transcarpathia, but for Bukovina, which is largely situated in Chernivtsi Oblast, and was actually once part of Romania. He writes, of course Hungary won't go to war against Ukraine for Bukovina, but it can take back its ancestral lands through the International Court of Justice with the help of Russia. It should be noted that a treaty between Ukraine and Hungary that delineates their common border was ratified in 1995 and remains in force. Either country can only challenge the existing borders before the International Court of Justice after the abrogation of the treaty, which seems unlikely. Despite its spurious and improbable lines of argument, the article was widely reposted. On September 29th, Russian and separatist media mockingly distorted a comment made by Nadia Savchenko. Savchenko is a Ukrainian politician and pilot who has been imprisoned in Russia since June 2014. She is charged in the murder of two Russian journalists, though many observers believe that she is innocent and that her ongoing trial is nothing but a show trial. At her trial recently, she said that she would give evidence in Russian. Ria Novosti quoted her as saying, It is difficult for me to speak in Russian, but as I have pains in my tongue and ears, I will give evidence in Russian, and if I forget any words, I will ask the interpreter for help. But some media distorted her comments by reporting that Savchenko had decided to give evidence in Russian because she had pains in her tongue and ears from the Ukrainian language. The line was then picked up by other media. But what in fact Savchenko actually said was, It is very difficult for me to speak in Russian. My tongue and ears have become tired during these 18 months. It is even more difficult to divide thoughts and phrases for the interpreter. I will try to give evidence in Russian, and if I forget any words, I will ask the interpreter. She said nothing of pains from the Ukrainian language. These are just some of the most recent bogus stories concerning Ukraine. To keep up to date with exposed fakes, please visit Stop Fake's website, and also please let Stop Fake know about any reports that you think need to be checked out or verified. I'm Jim Kovpak, and I'm pleased to have presented you with some of this week's exposed fakes. <laughs>